It's interesting how we can never get enough love, isn't it? I don't know how you interpret that. You may interpret it differently from me, and you may say, yeah, that's right, I can never get enough love, and really what you mean is the old lust thing. But I mean, from the point of view of just ordinary, normal people, most of us would say, yeah, we never seem to be able to get enough love. We probably would admit we never seem to be able to give enough love, too. But uh, primarily, we're concerned with the fact that we never seem to be able to get enough love. And that's what we've been talking about on this broadcast for several weeks now. The fact that there seems to be a, an appetite for love that all of us have that never is able to be satisfied by our wives, our children, our friends, our paramours, our girlfriends, our boyfriends. We never seem to be able to get enough love. We feel we were made for some kind of exhilarating experience in a love relationship that will enable us to experience continual ecstasy and a continual virtual orgasm in our own emotional lives, and that somehow we are not able to get that. And we're always, of course, looking for it. What we have been saying is, the reason is that you and I were made by a being that has oceans of love. He has so much love that he's able to strew daffodils across hillsides with an extravagance that would shame even the most generous millionaire in the world. He is able to people the oceans with fish and with all kinds of life and colors that would put to shame the most glorious colors that the Impressionist artists have ever put on canvas. He has so much love that he is able to fill the space of the universe with so many planets that dwarf our creations as human beings and yet leave so much space that it is as if you sprinkled a quart of water on the surface of the earth to compare the number of planets there are with the space that surrounds them. So generous and so extravagant and so full and complete is this creator, and we were made by him for his love. So no wonder... <laughs> We find that we never seem to get enough love because you know that instead of living uh, in belief in him and trusting him and regarding him as our friend, which is what he wants us to do, we have given up that idea as kind of infantile. And we've begun to live our lives as practical atheists who exist on an earth that is made by nothing but time plus chance and exist as individuals who seem to just appear in space for a brief 70 years and then disappear forever. And so we've regarded ourselves as little specks of chance. And yet we are made instead by this infinite creator for the experience of his absolute love and the happiness of his friendship. The result is... We have a great sense of lack in our lives and are always trying to make it up. And that's why we're always trying to get some kind of happiness that will provide the kinds of excitement and exhilaration and peace and stability and quietness and affection that we feel we were made for. That's why we go after the fast motorbike. That's why we go after the Ferrari. That's why we're anxious for a car that will do the 10-second dash faster. That's why we're always looking for some personal relationship that will give us what our wives have not given us or our husbands or our fathers or our children have not given us. That's why we're always looking for yet another experience. That's why the old heroin thing has gone so well. That's why crack has gone so well. That's why all the experiments with drugs have gone so well in our world because we're all looking for an infinite happiness. And somehow it's impossible to get it. 
And uh, really the happiness that we were made for is the happiness of an infinite relationship with an un omnipotent person. And I'd point out to you that you know fine well that that's the greatest happiness you have in this life. It's the happiness of a personal relationship. That's about the highest happiness you have, isn't it? It's not really that your wife is good-looking. It's not really that your children are the greatest in the world. But it's the love that they have for you and the love you have for them. That's the most precious thing you have in the world. It's the love relationship that you had with your mother or your dad that give you the greatest happiness. And so the most precious thing and the most happy thing in the whole universe is a love relationship. And that's really what we were made for, a love relationship with the greatest person in the whole universe who is your father and who knows you and thinks of you and knows your name and has counted the hairs of your head. And it's his love for you that will give you absolute happiness. But, of course, we've given up that old-fashioned idea and so we're left with this great dearth of love and therefore this great dearth of happiness in our lives. So we find ourselves faced with 70 or 80 years to live on this earth, and we decide to ourselves, boy, we'd better make the most of it we can, we'd better grab every ounce of happiness that we can get, and so we set about it with a will. And we tie happiness to what happens. In other words, we tie it to circumstances. And even though old Dr. Samuel Johnson, you remember, said, if we would only realize that changing our circumstances will not make us happy. Despite that, we constantly believe that if we could get the right set of circumstances, we would be happy. And so that's what we do. We think of an ideal dream world that we would like. The right girl, the right children, the right home, the right neighborhood, the right job, the right vacations, the right combination of circumstances, and we will be happy. And we never seem to be able to get them. But meanwhile, we become dominated by circumstances. Our happiness depends utterly on our circumstances. For instance, you get up on a rainy morning. How do you feel? <sighs> terrible, terrible. It's raining again today. Won't it ever stop raining? Look, it just drips down and soaks through you continually. Look at the dark clouds. What, yet again, intervals, bright intervals, that's all we ever are forecast, bright intervals, but mainly cloudy. It's always cloudy. It's all always dull today. And we feel uh, unhappy and sad because it's raining outside or because it's dull. You know the way we feel. There's a saying in America, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. And we say, oh, it's the weekend. It's Friday. Good. We have something to look forward to. In fact, we arrange little happinesses, little circumstances that will make us look forward to things. We plan to buy a little thing at the fruit shop on Friday. We plan to buy a little extra booze from the wine store on Saturday so that we'll have a little bright spot in the weekend that we can look forward to. And so we try to plan little serendipities, little unexpected pleasures and happinesses, little circumstances that will make things better for us. We look forward to our vacations. Many of us live from vacation to vacation. Many of us live from weekend to weekend. Many of us live from Friday to Friday, just looking forward for that circumstance that will make us feel happy. Of course, the problem is it lasts just for a brief time, and then we're back into the old grind again. And the truth is that even when the circumstances occur, we never seem to get that lift and that exhilaration and satisfaction from the happiness that we thought we would. And of course, the reason is that the happiness we were made for is the love relationship with our Creator. That's what alone gives us the excitement of flashing through space at incredible speeds, flashing down snow slopes at tremendous rate, because he has all the excitement of the snow slopes and the ski slopes and this excitement of space travel within himself. And when we are close to him, we share all that excitement. But meanwhile, our search for happiness has tended to make us monsters. Let's talk a little tomorrow again about what our search for happiness and circumstance has often done to the good personalities that we had when we were born.